Hello. Today we will show you a connection between a remote desktop located in Birmingham through Dispel, our preferred remote access app, and an automation platform, a TIA portal installed in a server in Nottingham, to manage a physical PLC, built also at Polestar's HQs in Nottingham. In this case, we will be making some changes in the automated production schedule, so you can see the impact of the program running on the PLC. Now, let's start a remote session. Stats, desktops, using Quick Connect, copy the password first, Quick Connect, provisioning, and download the RDP session. Open the RDP, hit the paste password, continue. And we open up the Dispel server. Let's connect to the automation portal. Okay, so on the server itself, we've got a number of different Siemens applications. Tier portal version 17 is the one we need to open. In this instance, it takes a few moments. Okay, for the purpose of this project, uh, the application called PLC Sim. Click the open. Project will open. Now click the project view. You can go via this path, but it's not commonly used. Uh, so hit the project view. This will now show you the PLC and the structure of the actual program itself. This part on the left uh, shows the program and the device and hardware, etc. And all, all common tags. On the right, this pane changes according to what you're opening. And the centre panel is where obviously you can see everything. Uh, below, again, this changes depending on what you're open and can be used for settings, etc. We'll open up the device configuration. So within this project, we've got an F7-1200 PLC, and also we've got an additional CP card. Uh, at the moment, it's it's actually configured, but not in use, but could be used for Profinet, etc. Looking at the program blocks, we've got the main OB, so that's, a, that's the main part which calls the main program, which in this instance is simulation. We've got some other function calls which are doing signals, etc., calculations, analogs, and more of that can be described later, and it's in the video as well. But basically, what this program does, if we open up the simulation, okay, so this is what the program. This is the program itself, and basically, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to reference it is by is using Weinstefan data. So Weinstefan is a is used com primarily within packaging departments uh, and it gives the predefined setup. So everything in here, we're simulating levels, simulating speed, counters, etc. Uh, but basically it's all based on wire Stefan, uh, which is an industry standard. And if we look into the MFDB, you can see the tag structure, which is what we're trying to achieve. So we've got operating mode, program mode, program state. So we're simulating a complete machine in effect. Uh, we've got a number of counters, measured values for process variables, etc. So that is how the that is how the program's configured. We've also got a number of different watch tables. Again, these can be used different in different in different ways. The setup in the PLC, uh, but also available uh, using HTTPS uh, directly to the PLC. So make the simpler to use rather than having to go into the PLC. Anybody can view it uh, via the web portal. So click the go online button at the top. And at this point, if the program's current and everything is good, everything down this side should go green. Anything which is not green means there's a mismatch between the either offline online version or this configuration of the hardware is incorrect. So again, if it's if it's not green, there's been a change. If it's green, we're all, we're all good. So no need to worry about anything. So if we start looking into the program, then we can go on to 
a simulation. And from here, you can go online and view what's happening with the simulation. So by clicking the spectacles, you can monitor what's happening in the PLC. You can see now things have gone green, showing that that run is actually being executed at the moment. So if we go down to something which, which is not running, as you can see this, the old sequence part, we green on the left, uh, but we dotted line going through, meaning that the, the rung is not being executed. So in this instance, the output cannot come on until the rung, rung is actually in use. So that's showing you're connected. You can do the same on the variables. So if we look at the watch table for the MES data, again, you've got the option to monitor all. So we can monitor, and this is what's in the PLC at the moment. So operating mode is one, program mode 64, the operating state is 32760. So there's a reference behind each one of them. Uh, and again, this is just so, rather than have a physical value, you've got a digital value with the information on. So you can see this is idle, which, which is true. So that is the 32767. So the program changes, these states will these states will obviously change, but again, they're not really used, it's more just for indication that makes it easier to follow the program. Connecting to the PLC. Okay, then to simulate obviously a machine running uh, and how what sequences we want it to do, we've created some iron low limits so these are limits to when an action will take place so based on the timer running or the counter pulse currently it's set to 300 seconds so we'll count up 300 seconds the old program will run for that time after which it will stop uh, and then you've, you can either start it again from the plc directly or you can start it from the module box so you can do either or it's it started by a push button or started by the PLC. It's entirely, it's entirely your choice. But what it will do every time we change a value, then this dictates when this action will take place during the run of the program. So as, as you can see at the moment, the low limit of 75, the high limit of 84. So if we want to change them values, we can enter it there directly, but using the SIM table, we can, we can change the value at this point. So we can say we want that to be 80 and that value to be 90 or whatever you wish. And then you can write that to the PLC. So you can write that back. If we click that button, I won't write it back. I'll better disable it. Okay, so let's rewind. So, the sequence, as it runs through, creates diff a number of different actions. So, as I said before, the wine Stefan states to watch you. So, starvation at the machine, uh, build back at the machine, emergency stop, etc. So, to simulate them, we use time-based. So, everything's time-based. So, we've got a timer running, and at the moment, it's set to 300 seconds for the complete program. So when it reaches 75 seconds, we set the bit. When it gets 84 seconds, we stop, we disable that. So the room will go false. So the starvation signal will drop. Now to change M values, it's all using a calculation. So the calculation block is here. So we, we use the preset timer to determine the actions and how long the each one will run for in the program. Okay, so the program runs uh, for 300 seconds and within the 300 seconds we have a number of actions uh, which take place to generate the signals uh, for the PLC and for the lamps uh, show. So in this particular instance, looking at the first part, it's 75 seconds and 84 seconds an action will take place. So at that point, this signal will come on and it illuminate the appropriate light on the panel uh, and this runs throughout but it's all based on the time preset of 300 seconds 
Now, to change the time preset of 300 seconds, it's set here, and this can only be done when the program is stopped. So at the moment, the program is not running. So as you can see there, we've got 500 seconds. We can change that to 1,000 seconds. And then by committing that change, make sure you've only got the one you want to commit highlighted. If you've got two, it will commit two. And write that back to the PLC. And you can see now the presets have changed from 75, 8 to 84, to 250 and 280. So every time you change this value, it affects what happens to the program. So if you put 900 seconds and write that, the actions will take place at different times in the program. So the number of number of actions are preset. The time it takes place in the duration is based upon the preset time you, you've set there. You cannot go any lower than 150. If you try going to 100 seconds, it right back to 150. Uh, as you can see, the time, the time the lamps are indicated are very low at that point, hence why we, we limit it to 150 seconds. Let's start a process on a machine. Okay, so at this point now, we can start the process so by pressing the push button on the PLC panel we'll see the value start to change it's now started you can see the count is running the process the program's now changing the states are changing and we're now starting to gener generate speed counters analog signals etc so we're now running up, so we've now got 22 seconds and actions happen. So you can see the lamps are changing. We've got sequence running, sequence enabled. It's in production and operating at the moment. And that can be seen on the on the panel. We we'll stop it, it's too quick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we're gonna have to extend it. So at the moment, the program is stopped. Uh, as you can see, the simulation is disabled. So by pressing the start button on the panel, you can see now the simulation is enabled and the lamp is showing on the panels to say that is happening. The counter is counting. The states are changing now. So you can see the states changing. We are generating counters, as you would if it was a machine. Also measured value for speed, levels, etc. So we're waiting for the first point. So the first point things will happen is that when it reaches 45 seconds, and we'll get a machine fault. So the machine fault will come on at 45 seconds. And that should that will bring on the lamp to say we've got the fault. Again, these are all highlighted on the panel. There you go, you can see we're in fault. The sinks is running and we're flashing the we're flashing the lamp to say we've got a fault on the blue lamp. After 45 seconds, we move to the next phase, which we have now. We've now gone back into production. You can see 128 in production. And we've got the production LED, a uh, production indicator uh, showing as well. Again, we'll wait for the next preset at 84. And the next, act, the next action will be machine will go held. So at this point, the L light will come on and the state will change to held. We've gone to held and the held lamp has come on on the panel. So this repeats itself throughout the process. And you can see in certain instances, depending on what state it's in, these values will go to zero, uh, just really to mimic what would happen in a in a production environment, as especially around a packaging machine or packaging machine, depending what we're looking at. But again, just gives you an indication of what's what's happening. So every time we see the timer reach you the a state, an action will commence, and certain values will happen here. This will repeat for the whole 300 seconds, after which the program will stop, uh, or it can be stopped by the panel, 
So if you wish to press the stop button on the, on the panel, you'll see the program will go to stop. And the simulation is disabled. You can obviously, of course, do the same from here. You can start the simulation by clicking that and then forcing it. So if I did the same there, that starts the simulation. You can see the time is counting. The states are changing. And on the panel, you'll see the lamps changing accordingly. Again, you can do it either way. And you can also do the same by the, by the web portal, uh, which is using the same watch tables as you've seen here. So to stop that, simply select stop, master stop, commit it, it stops. Logging off. Okay, so at this point, once you're finished with the program or looking at the program, provided you've made no changes, which again, everything is green. If, it, if you've made changes, then obviously that's something else to do. You need to compile and save the program. You will be prompted to save the project. Uh, you don't need to save the project, it'll take it from the PLC, but good practice would, would do that. So at this point, we'll go offline. Was not, you cannot, everything's not highlighted anymore, so you can no longer do changes. So you can't modify it to the PLC at that point because you're not online. So all the circles have gone from there. So save the project, close the project down. And at this point, obviously, then you're back to the dispel window itself. How the automation licensing works? Licensing for Somatic Manager can be viewed opening up the license management tool and from here you can see the licenses which are installed on this PC. So at the moment we've got one license which is the Step 7 Basic version 17 uh, which we are using for the Somatic S7-1200 PLC. Other licenses can be simply added by transferring the license key if needed. But from what this program is doing, all we require in this instance is step seven to be used. So you don't need to do anything on this part. The license is there. It's only if you wish to use a product which is not licensed, i.e. WinCC, then you would need to install that license key yourself or if you wish to use a new appeal a new appeal scene type i'll stop that and you have to edit that out should you wish to use another type of s7 plc i.e 1500 that would need its own separate license the license installed on this is just basically for the s7 1200 thank you for watching if you'd like to try this platform out, just contact us.